You know, a lot of times in the church world, there's a lot of focus on money and giving and tithing. Well, you know, really, the Bible talks about being generous. And so today on Daily Renewal, that's what we're going to be talking about. Hello, this is Pastor Lyle, and welcome to Daily Renewal. Well, today, we're going to be talking about the topic of generosity. Now, I will not be taking up an offering when we're done, and I'm not here to argue on whether you should tithe or not. Um, that's a, it seems to be a great debate within people, within Christianity. Should we tithe or should we not? You know, uh, a lot of people say the reason I don't tithe is because that's Old Testament. Well, for me personally, I am a tither, but to say that, uh, that, that uh, God wants me to give 10% uh, of my income, according to the Old Testament, well, that's not actually correct. If you look at Jewish history, uh, the tithe, uh, or what the, they gave in those days, actually, uh, it was actually a lot more than 10%. Um, they used to give the Lord's tithe, which was 10% uh, of all your goods, and they gave them to the Levites, because that was the... Uh, the, uh, their opportunity to support the priestly ministry. The, the Levites, that was how they lived, was they lived off the tithe. And we mistakenly think often that uh, that, that was the only thing that, that our income was given to was the Levites. The 10% went to the Levites. Well, if you study that a little further, what you find is, is in the culture, they also had, well, they had the Lord's tithe, but they also had, uh, and, and uh, if you didn't give that, that was mandatory, uh, that was considered robbing God, according to Malachi 3.8 in the Old Testament, if you didn't give the Lord's tithe. But then they also had the poor tithe in Deuteronomy 14.28 and 29. They had the festival tithe in Deuteronomy 12.10, uh, 11, uh, 12, 10, 11, and 18. And then they also had grace giving, which uh, was a multitude of other offerings that weren't required that they gave every year. Well, just with the ones that were required, if you do do the math, you'll find out that they did, didn't give 10% of their income. They actually gave 25% of their income. Now, aren't you glad they don't preach that from the pulpits today? Well, um, we're going to be studying this topic of generosity based, again, on our study in Philippians. And we're going to carry on. And there's, of course, more uh, than one way that you can be generous, but here in Philippians, Paul uh, is, is, is talking to the church he, he loved, Philipp, the, the church in Philippi, and they were the only church at one point that were actually supporting Paul financially. And so let's look at what Paul had to say. Uh, we pick it up in Philippians 4, verse 10. He says this, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now... At last, your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. I guess the first thing that we have to understand, whether, whether you want to choose to believe in tithing or not, when it comes to the New Testament, it is important to understand that our generosity uh, needs to be especially for one focus. Uh, and that is the building of the kingdom of God. And uh, in this case, Paul is looking and he's saying, hey, I am so thankful, you guys, uh, that uh, you understand that your generosity is helping me be able to preach the gospel. And uh, it, it's so tough today because I know that a lot of people, the reason that they have uh, uh, maybe used to give and they don't give is because they might see people who preach the gospel, and I, I use that term loosely because I, I really believe that a lot of times in the church today, the gospel, the actual gospel is not preached. Um, but here's Paul, a preacher of the gospel, and he has people that, that understand that, you know, as a preacher of the gospel, he's given his life for this. He is not an Old Testament Levite, 
but he is somebody that in the New Testament is in need of finances in order to preach the gospel. And, um, you know, we see even Jesus had people in his ministry that, uh, that helped him. And uh, we see that in, um, in uh, Luke 8, Luke 8, starting in verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass afterward that he, Jesus, went through every city and village, preaching and bringing glad tidings of the kingdom, uh, kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stuart, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. Jesus had people who had finances. Because in order for the gospel to be preached, there is uh, finances are needed to do that. And we see that there was people that were even willing to uh, be generous to Jesus in his ministry. Uh, we move on to uh, to uh, verse 15, it says, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit uh, that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, to, to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to just stick this in here uh, just quickly. I want you to notice, a lot of times this scripture uh, in verse 19, the fact that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, I want you to notice that this was actually only mentioned to the church that understood giving. Uh, and I just want to leave that with you. There was a revelation of giving, and Paul had no problem proclaiming, you know what, and my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But the part I want to focus on here is the, the verse 17. It says, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Well, I want to be careful because I know a lot of times there's preaching about the fact that if you give, you know, if you, you reap what you sow and, 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 and we're all looking for returns on our giving, I want to be very careful about that because I don't think we ever want to get into the place where we're giving just to get. But we have to understand that Paul here, first of all, in the whole first part of, the, of Philippians, Paul was, was, was emphasizing the fact that the gospel was the reason uh, for, for why he was living, the reason why he's doing what he's doing. There's such an emphasis on getting the gospel preached. And today, I don't really believe uh, that, that there's a lot of people that understand that without the gospel, it doesn't matter what we do as a church. Church can become a business, it can become an organization, it become, becomes a religious thing that it was never intended to be without the gospel of Jesus Christ at the center. It has to be the message. And so when I, I look at this idea of Paul saying, thank you, you've understood and you've shown even from your finances, because our finances have a lot to do with, with um, they're one of the most important things in most people's lives. And he says, you know what? I want to thank you that you understood that in my time of distress, you helped me financially so that the gospel could be preached. Yes, it helps me, but you understood that the gospel was important. And as a result, I want you to know that there is fruit that abounds to your account when you sow into somebody who is preaching the gospel. And he is specifically saying, thank you for sowing into my life to see the gospel preached. Well, 
I want to look at that a little bit because let's look at Galatians 6. You know, should we be, be um, uh, giving generously to preachers of the gospel? Well, in Galatians 6, 6, it says, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. So there's an indication it's a good thing to be generous with somebody that's preaching the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 9, 11, it says, If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap for you from your material things? And in verse 14, it says, Even so the Lord has commanded, commanded that those who preach the gospel should live from the gospel. 1 Timothy 5, 17, 18, Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. So, should I give? You know, I guess a lot of this depends on your revelation of the gospel. Not everybody has the same opportunity. I mean, we should all be preachers of the gospel, um, but... In this, I realize that not everybody has the same uh, 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 giftings as far as, you know, for some people it's not easy to go out and preach the gospel, but I believe everybody is an evangelist or should do the work of an evangelist. But there is some that I believe are called to do this uh, primarily, and, and uh, from there, people that do teach, we see here that we need to make sure that they aren't hindered from doing so. You know, I'm reminded of a story. I, a friend of mine who's pastored for years, um, he actually has his own business and he went out and he was uh, doing uh, contracting and different things. And I remember he told me this story one time that, that uh, an elder came up to him uh, at the end of one of his messages. And, you know, here he is, he's doing his best and he's working a full-time job pastoring. And, and uh, he's, he's, so he's putting together messages, but he's, he, you know, he's got lots going on. And somebody in his congregation, a leader in his congregation, came up to him after he was done preaching. He says, yeah, you must not have had much time to prepare for that message this week, did you? <laughs> Can you imagine how tough that would be as a pastor? When you're doing everything you can. And you know, Paul, obviously, you know, there was times where Paul didn't want to take from the church. And he did his best to, to do work on the side. But ultimately... What we should be concerned about is for those that do labor in the gospel, if we are able to help them so that they do have the time to study, so that they do have the time to put in the work, so that they can bring the word to you, but also bring the, the gospel to those who have never maybe heard it preached, uh, you know, we need to understand that if we can play a role in helping free them up to see the gospel preach, ultimately that's what this is about. So... Do you know a preacher of the gospel that you can be generous to? Yes, there's other ways that you can be generous. But the scripture is clear that this is one way where we do need to be generous. And that's in helping people that truly preach the gospel. I'm not talking about lying in a preacher's pockets. But I can tell you that if you, you don't have to search far to find preachers that actually preach the gospel that would benefit from your generosity. And it says that, there, that that is credited to your account. So there's really no excuse to hold back our finances. Well, how much should I give then? Well, as I mentioned to you, I, I personally tithe, but if you're not at, at that place yet, then I'm not going to argue with you. But I guess the next question would have to be, between you and God, how important is the message of the gospel to you. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 21, he says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So I guess your giving will de be dependent on how important is the gospel to you? Is it worth 10%? Is it worth 30? Is it worth one? You know, I'll tell you how the gospel, how important the gospel was in the New Testament. You know, I've heard many people say, "Oh, we want a New Testament church," and and, and they've got all these ideas of how that looked and everything. Well, I'm going to tell you how it looked. There was people in in Acts four, Barnabas especially was mentioned. 
people that sold properties and brought the, the money, all of it, not 10% of it, all of it to the apostles' feet just to care for people in the church and just to see the gospel preached. That's generosity. How bad do you want to see people reach for Jesus? Well, if you really want it bad, then you're not going to worry about your percentage. You're going to give. In fact, the Bible says, you know, the rich young ruler, Jesus said, give everything you have. Wow. Can you imagine that? Now, I don't think God is asking us to, to, to empty our bank accounts today. Uh, maybe, but I don't think he's asking you to empty your bank account today. But I will ask you this. If the gospel being preached is something that is important to you as it is was important to Paul, and, and I look at it and I go, God, give me a greater revelation of how important it is to see the gospel preached. And then from there, I think a, a large indicator of how important that is to me is to do with my generosity, with my finances, and with the things that I have. So I want to challenge you in that today. If the gospel's important, be generous. Be generous with your finances. Find somebody who preaches the true gospel message. Find somebody who needs it. And bless their lives. Yes, there's many ways to be generous. But there's many out there who, are, who really are doing their best to preach the gospel. Bless them today. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. Uh, I just want to remind you, if you, would, uh, if you would consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, it helps us. We want to get these videos out to more people. And that definitely helps us do that. Feel free to share the videos. Like us on Facebook. Uh, we're on Instagram and Twitter. Um, also, if you're in the Kamloops area, remember, stop into River City Church. We'd love to have you. Having said that, God bless you and have a great day.